Right, hi everyone. Um, for those of you who have just joined, um, welcome to this red and yellow webinar. We're just going to wait for a few more of our um, guests to log on and we'll get started. So give it another minute or so and we'll get started with our introductions and get you ready for this power pack session. Hey, for those of you who are just joining us now, hello and welcome from Red and Yellow. Um, my name is Nick and I am the content lead here at Africa's leading creative school of business. Um, it's my absolute pleasure to facilitate our latest webinar hosted by none other than Sarah Browning de Villiers, who is the chief content officer at Machine. And we're also joined by our, the head of our online team, um, Stephen Hill, who's going to be adding some insights as well. Once again, before we get started with the official introductions, I'm just going to wait one more minute for some others to join, so hang tight until then. Cool, it looks like we are ready to get going. I'm sure a few more delegates will be joining um, as we move along. Um, but for those who have just joined now, welcome to Red and Yellow's latest webinar hosted by Sarah Browning Villiers and Stephen Hill. Thanks once again for making the time to spend with us and I hope you're ready for an exciting session featuring some really expert and useful advice. Please take note that throughout the session, um, you may have some questions. You're welcome to pop, pop them into the chat as we go along over the course of the webinar um, and our hosts will get to them probably at the end of their particular session um, when they have a gap um, or at the very end during the formal q a um, also pleased to announce that each of you here today will be receiving exclusive discounts and rewards on our online education offering and you'll hear a little bit more about that towards the end of the webinar so without further ado, onto our introductions, it's my absolute pleasure to introduce you to your host for this session, Sarah, who will be taking you through five ways that content can supercharge your marketing strategy. Uh, you'll also be hearing from Red and Yellow's online team lead, um, Stephen Hill, who will let you know a little bit more about how Red and Yellow can help make this and more happen for you and your organization. So Sarah is an award-winning content marketer and chief cont content officer at Machine, Publicist Group Africa, as well as the council lead for IAB South Africa Content Marketing Council. Her work includes award-winning content marketing and content strategy for clients such as Sunlum, RCS, Net Group Investments, PepsiCo, Sunlum Reality, and more. Sarah was named the 2020 Editor of the Year at the South African Publication Forum Awards for her work with Sunlam and Sunlam and Reality. Sarah is also the tutor for our very own digital content and copywriting short course here at Red and Yellow, and we are incredibly excited to have her on board teaching the next generation of creative thinkers. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to hand over the reins to Sarah for this session. Take it away, Sarah. 
Thanks so much. It's always the most awkward thing when you have to sit here and smile while someone talks about you. So thank you so much for all of those kind words. And hello, especially to the people who I recognize from Machine. There are a couple of you on the court. So nice to see your, your not quite your faces, but your names. Um, yeah, Machine is a creative um, solutions agency, but we have quite an interesting specialization, um, which I oversee, I have the privilege of overseeing. We have a content marketing specialization and with that also internal communications and B2B. Um, so I'm super, super passionate about content marketing and horribly biased about how important it is in a marketing strategy. Um, so I'm really excited to have a little bit of time with you guys to talk through that today. There's a lot of misunderstanding I find generally in the industry um, amongst all of us, including my clients, about what content marketing is and how it's different from content or marketing. Um, and that's, I'm hoping we're going to have a little bit of a sort of unpack of that today. Um, so yeah, let me move straight first to my first point, which is that one of the things that's so important about content marketing and that makes it so distinct, I think, from a lot of other strategies that we use in marketing um, is that it demands that you as a brand or as a client um, stop putting yourself first. Um, content marketing is all about your audience. And the diagram on the next slide is going to, I think it's, I, I'm a strategist. I love a good Venn diagram. I don't think you can be a strategist without using a good Venn diagram. Um, but on the next slide, you'll see that when we look at, think about content marketing, we think about how it's different to um, all the other types of marketing that we do. We really make sure that we're starting with our audience first. And what that means is that actually you have to know who your audience is before you can employ any kind of content marketing strategy. And that seems like a really obvious thing. Um, but I think many of us on this call who have clients or who work with brands or who work for a brand, it's actually really difficult and really tough to know who your audience is and to be really, really specific about it. Typically, when I get briefs from, from clients, as an example, the brief is, this is what we want to achieve as a brand. This is our objective. We want to sell more stuff. We want to build an audience. We want to um, change our payoff line. We want to help people understand that we're cheaper, better, faster. And that's the exact opposite of where we start when we talk about content marketing. Um, and that, for me, is what makes content marketing so distinctly different. When we talk about content marketing, we start with, who is your audience and what do they care about? And we kind of go quite deep into who our audience is. And for those of you who've done any sort of, of the, the sort of um, training and that red and yellow offers around content marketing, there's a huge amount of work done in those modules around audience research and audience insights first before there's any sort of content creation work, which is absolutely key. Um, and it can be really tough to tell clients or to work with brands say, hang on, let's put your objectives and needs to one side for a second. Yes, they're important. Yes, they're gonna pay the bills. So we do need to, to kind of get to them. But actually, let's know who we're talking to and what they actually need, because that helps us create a very clear direction of how we can reach people in a way that matters, that yes, ultimately relates to the brand, but isn't all about the brand first. So the moment I see marketing that is product-led or, or service-led or brand-led, um, for me, that is very much not content marketing. So that's one of the key differences if you're trying to figure out the difference between most other marketing strategies and content marketing. We have a, in content marketing, have what we call editorial, um, which is much more about being audience led. So as an example, and I, I often use this example, if you are Pampers and you're trying to get parents to buy your nappies, um, a typical marketing strategy would be to talk about the benefits of why your nappies are better. Maybe they're cheaper, maybe they are, they last longer. Um, I'm sure there's lots of other reasons why you would choose one nappy brand over the other. Maybe they're more trusted, whatever it might be. That's a typical marketing approach. But from a content marketing point of view, we're going to say, hang on, who, who is the audience that we're trying to reach and what do they need? What do they care about? Perhaps there's a kind of base of new parents who are super panicked about what on earth they're going to do with this new baby that they've got. It's the first time they're doing it. And actually, maybe they have real anxiety around budget and cost or real anxiety around safety and um, kind of the kind of fabrics and, and chemicals and materials that they use on their baby. Maybe it's just knowing where to even start because it's so overwhelming. And a great content marketing campaign or um, approach will actually look at where are the emotive areas of need for an audience? What do they need? And how do we, how can we create storytelling around that that will absolutely connect to our brand and product pampers, but doesn't start by trying to sell them nappies or trying to sell them the brand pampers. It actually meets the audience where they are. So when I also talk about content marketing, I talk about the fact that we, we don't broadcast, we sort of mingle. Um, we're in the conversation. We're not trying to push a conversation down people's throats. And in order to be in a conversation, you have to know your audience, know what they care about and start there. 
Um, so really like, at the core of great content marketing is audience led work um, and the brand feels very organic, often sort of quite subtle, quite whispered in the background. Maybe you listen to a Pampers podcast about parenting tips and you actually don't even realize it's by Pampers, but somehow you do and somehow that tends you towards a, a brand affinity to Pampers. But at no point would you say, oh, it's a Pampers podcast, because it doesn't feel like that when you're engaging with it. It feels like a really educational, helpful, expert podcast that meets your needs as a first time parent. And that's a great example of, of fantastic content marketing. So again, for me, it's all about stop putting yourself first as a brand, as a product, um, as an agency. We also have our own ideas of what things should be. We always have to ask ourselves, who is our audience? What do they want? What do they need? And in my point of view, in terms of how this can really supercharge your marketing strategy, it also makes what you do far more sustainable and long term. Um, and to my to the next slide of, of what that means is it actually means you start building meaningful relationships, relationships that last. And that is really hard to do. And I think that is the sort of gold standard of what any marketer and brand is trying to do. You don't want to keep paying to convince people to like your brand or to keep reaching people. We want to build relationships with consumers and prospects that last. And the more authentic an audience led you are, the more likely that is to be. Um, one of the analogies I often use when I talk about this is if, if you just moved in to a new neighborhood um, and the first thing you do is you go next door to your neighbor and you knock on their door and you say, would you mind you know, babysitting my dog for me this weekend? That's quite a hectic thing to ask somebody to do straight off the bat when you've never met them before and you don't know much about them. Um, and most of us need a little bit of warming up before we do something costly for somebody else or for ourselves. And generally as brands, we're asking consumers to make costly decisions. We're asking them to spend money with us or to spend time with us or to give us their information or their data or tell us more about themselves. And that's all costly. Even just asking somebody to stop scrolling down the Facebook feed and take notice of our piece of content is a costly thing to ask somebody to do. And so the more effective we are at building relationships at last, the more effective all of our marketing efforts become. And again, that's where I get really excited about content marketing because great content marketing is all about building relationships. And on the next slide, again, the strategy that I am, it's another diagram. Um, but really what we are in the business of as content marketers is that relationships gray pyramid at the bottom, not quite a pyramid triangle. Um, Content marketing is sustained by its very nature. So what that means is that con good content marketing is, is ongoing all the time. It's always on. It's happening regardless of whether there's a specific campaign or activation happening for a brand or product. And again, go back to that neighbor analogy. If I only ever knocked on my neighbor's door when I needed something, my neighbor would start avoiding me um, because there would be a very clear sign. Sarah's going to come knock on my door. She's going to ask me to do something. Let's not answer the door. And that's often what brands do with marketing. They basically knock on the door when they want to sell you something or there's a new offer or there's a new car or there's a new model or we want you to update your policy details with us or oh, hang on your, your insurance premium has changed and we actually only talk to people when there's something that's generally not good news or that costs somebody something great content marketing realizes that that's not a good way to build relationships and again being audience-led audience first not brand first great content marketing is about building relationship over time that could be as simple as an old school emailer um, that a brand sends to you that actually is filled with information and tips and advice and content or entertainment that you need. It isn't always a promotion trying to sell you something. Um, but there are lots of ways to build relationship. Um, you think about sort of, again, like fairly old school content marketing would be sort of printed magazines that brands give you, but there's podcasts, there's all sorts of content that you can produce, whether it be long form content online. Um, yeah, I mean, this webinar, Guys, it's content marketing. It's trying to give you something that you need in order to ultimately sell you something, but hopefully in a way that was useful and interesting. And that's my job is to try and make it useful and interesting. This is a great example of good, what I hope will be good content marketing. The other thing about building relationships that last is that you actually start to build a, a kind of credibility and reputation with audiences without necessarily having that based on a specific product or selling point. And that can become really, really powerful for, for brand love um, for, in a long-term point of view. It also flips the other way. The more that I get to know my neighbor, the more that I spend time talking to them and getting to know them, the more I know how to ask them to do it, make something, could kind of make a costly choice for me. So if I know that my neighbor is really into gardening, maybe I will eventually know to say to my neighbor, would you mind dog sitting my dog this weekend? I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a voucher to garden center in exchange. 
oh, okay, now I know my neighbor a little bit better to know how to convince them to maybe take a more costly action. Um, so I actually get to learn more about my neighbor the more that I build relationships. And as brands, we also have to be very mindful that in order to build relationship, we have to learn about our audiences more and more and more and our audiences change. So again, back to my first point of you stop putting yourself first. The more audience focused you become, the more effective you become at how to market to them. Um, and because audiences are not monolithic entities that don't change, they're made up of humans like us who evolve all the time. The more time you put into relationship, the more aware you are of what those evolutions are like. Um, and that's when you can get really smart as brands, because the more that you get to know somebody, the more that you might be aware that this person might be susceptible to an offer or a deal of this kind. Um, but maybe this person isn't there yet. You know, again, back to the campus example, if I understand that I've got an audience here of first time parents and their kids are a certain age, that immediately changes the kind of nappy that I market to them. Um, if the moment that they're over a certain age, maybe I'm marketing something else to them and giving them different information. So we become more effective. And that's why you see that purple line where your more traditional marketing efforts, which are still important, should become more effective. Um, and far more personalized and relevant, the more that you're building relationship. And again, that's why I think content marketing isn't to replace existing marketing strategies, but it really supercharges what we're doing already. And that takes me to my third point, which is that content marketing helps us end short-termism. Um, I hate short-termism amongst our clients. It, it's rampant. Most of our clients are corporates. And so they have short-term goals that they need to reach. And those goals are really important. Perhaps they're sales goals. Um, they might be retention goals. And that's because typically companies report annually. Um, they report to shareholders and there are annual bonuses. That's how our corporate world is structured. The problem with that is that you don't necessarily set goals and KPIs that build brands for the future. And future fit brand building takes a long time. So you need people who are in it for 5, 10, 15, 20 years with a longer term strategy, I think, to be ultimately really effective. And this is something that we've really seen since 2020, 2021 onwards, where we talk at Machine about building for the platform world. And we use what we call a growth loop, which is something that at Machine, um, we've kind of created with Publicis Group as a sort of trademark of Publicis. And this is because we've recognized that most effective companies are what we call platform world companies. They no longer just sell a single service product or platform or, or, or kind of, yeah, opportunity. They actually monetize audiences. Um, so think about it. If you think about the top companies in the world, you think about Apple, you think about Meta, Google, Alibaba, Tencent, they are not making all of their money by selling a single product or service. Apple no longer just sells technology. It sells a lifestyle and it sells, sells an attention span. If you have Apple, Apple TV, Apple in your home, an Apple Watch, an Apple phone, and an Apple Mac, you have basically given Apple your entire audienceness, if, that, if I could come up with a word like that. Um, and so that becomes really, really key. So what we want to do is encourage our clients more and more to stop worrying so much about what we call paid audiences. So paying to reach audiences by broadcasting through Facebook or paying to, to um, advertise on Google because you don't own those audiences, somebody else does. And you now have to pay to get those audiences. We increasingly want our clients to be able to move audiences from that paid space into their own direct space, audiences that they can own and speak to directly, because that is what is key to becoming a platform future fit business. In order to do that, you've got to add give, give value. I'm not going to give you my email address and give you permission to talk to me if you're not going to give me something in exchange. And that's where content marketing becomes key. So again, maybe I'm not interested in campus nappies giving them my email address, but maybe if they're gonna give me access to free information that's really, really important to what I need right now, I will. And those are the tactics where content marketing becomes key to move people from the paid space into the direct space. I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna speed up a little bit. My fourth point is that you actually can learn things that transform your brand. And in this example, um, I'm gonna reference Unilever All Things Hair, which is a really a fantastic example of great content marketing. Please take some time to look, Google it, give it, a, give, it a re, give it a search. But essentially, Unilever has set up a what they call a fully editorial property. So it doesn't have any real Unilever branding on it called All Things Hair, which is predominantly um, hair video tutorials. Um, 
and that they use that they disseminate through social media. And their big goal was to build a first party data audience that was bigger than one that they could ever buy from Google for their specific target audience. So they had a very they have a very specific audience who they're trying to reach. They understood what this audience needed and what they were looking for, particularly on YouTube with regards to tutorials. And they create what actually feels like a cosmopolitan magazine or glamour magazine um, content. But what they're doing is building a first party data set of, of um, audience. But what was surprising um, for Unilever and what has been surprising for them is how much this community that they now own has taught them about their own products. And they now use this community also for research and development because this community talked back to them. And there is such deep knowledge and insights with this first party audience. There's such a deep understanding of the kind of content that they're consuming. But also there is such deep trust with this editorial brand all things here with the consumer that actually now they Unilever has been able to utilize the content marketing play to actually inform its scientific process and its product development suddenly they've got this first party community who are telling them what they think what they need what isn't isn't working for free as a brand um, and it's become a really key way for them to transform not just their marketing efforts but their fundamental product creation efforts and that isn't what they had set out to do at the beginning and finally, my final point, content marketing increases what we call your attention share. And this is going covering all those, all the points I've talked about, and especially the platform world point that I've spoken about. Um, typically, we've always wanted to increase wallet share. The more times you buy my product, the more wallet share I have, the better. But we know that it's not that simple anymore because the moment that you encounter somebody else or experience something else, it's very likely that your wallet share moves. So actually, I want your attention share. Um, the more of your attention I have, the better I know you, the less likely you are to go to a competitor. And that's really what Platform World does. That's what Apple and Meta and Google's big plays are. They want our attention more than anything else. Um, and if you go to, the, to the, the example on the next slide, Nike has a really simple example of how they use content marketing to do this. I don't know if some of you are probably part of it, the Nike Running Club. Um, and what's brilliant is that even if you've never bought a pair of Nike running shoes in your life, but you're part of the Nike Running Club, they've got your attention share. Suddenly they're involved in your life in a way that they wouldn't be, they don't need you to set foot in a store or to necessarily purchase from them for them to get your attention and start building affinity and love for the brand. Um, and what's even better is they're taking this attention away from a competitor. Um, um, so you're more likely to turn to Nike for, the, for your next product, but also they are starting to get to know you. They're starting to build that relationship. So going back to my original point about audience first, building relationships at last, that's exactly what this play is. And this is a content marketing play. It's not there to try and sell you something. Um, it's there to add value um, to your lives. It, it is a marketing play, but also it's going to build them a community, build them insights, build them R&D, um, create a kind of brand loyalty and love that a pair of shoes is unlikely to ever give them. So I know I've whizzed through it, it's been really quickly, um, been really quick, but I am going to pause there. I think I am probably out of time and hand back to Nick. I hope that's been useful, interesting. I can talk about this for a very long time. So I will stop um, before I bore everybody. There, Nick, back to you. Great, right, thank you so much, Sarah. Um, we're gonna just take a, a quick pause now to see if anybody has any questions. Um, you should be able to post your questions in the chat now. So we're just going to give um, a minute or two for anyone who wants to post their questions in the chat. I'll be reading them out and Sarah will be answering them. In the meantime, while you think of your questions, um, we will be running one or two polls throughout the webinar, um, starting now in the second half of the webinar, just to get some feedback from, from you on how you're enjoying this particular webinar and what we can improve upon. We've got a question from Sibulile. Um, will this presentation be made available to us afterwards and the recording? Correct. Um, we will be sending you um, a nicely packaged email after the presentation after this webinar with all the toolkits that you need um, to revisit and to go back and see what Sarah was speaking about um, during the session. Right. Um, but another thirty seconds or so for any more questions. And um, you'll see the poll would have popped up now. If you can just take a minute to answer that, we greatly appreciate your time. Okay, we've got a question for Sarah um, from Monwa BC. For clients that are wanting instant results, how do we convince them to play the long game? 
Oh, it's the pain of my life. Um, it depends on the client. It depends on the objectives. It depends on the budget. It's really hard. Um, I think the best, to be honest with you, my best clients are typically the clients who've been in their positions at a brand for a couple of years at least, so that they are somewhat in it for the long term in their role. Um, because you do have to have somebody who buys into a slightly longer term vision, and that is tough. That said, where we are able to show case studies, and we have this with a lot of our long-standing clients, Sunlum is the first one that comes to my mind, where we've worked with them for sort of 12 to 15 years plus. Um, we have amazing case studies of the value that we've been able to make to their bottom line through long-term thinking. And the moment that you can show those kinds of case studies, it is much easier to convince a client to invest that way. Um, but it is a challenge. And I think that's also why for me, content marketing isn't about replacing other marketing strategies. You still need your campaigns. You still want to hit those targets. Um, it's about supercharging what you do uh, and building that into your existing strategies, often with clients. Um, that's for me that often one of the better ways to win. And I will also say that tides are shifting in that, you know, to really compete in today's world, um, you have to think bigger than just your immediate product and service. You know, you think about all the loyalty programs that exist and all the different environments that we're in where it's not just about a single product, it's about being part of an ecosystem. That's content marketing. Um, and so I do think that clients' mindsets are shifting because they have to, because that's where, they, where all competitors are going. And we're cons what, as consumers, we expect personalization. We expect brands to know who we are. We expect brands to give us more and to invest in a relationship with us. We are more demanding of that. So I think that is shifting, um, but it is tough. Um, and so I think you've got to um, present thinking like this in the context of an overall marketing strategy. It isn't instead of the um, more short-term work that gets results um, short-term. Um, and you've ultimately also, like anything, make it measurable. Um, even if it's a long-term measure, make it measurable so that there are clear guidelines and markers for clients to see progress and to see that what we're doing from a content marketing point of view is effective, even if it's effective over a longer term. But it is a challenge. It is a challenge. Here we go. Great. Thank you so much, Sarah. <clears throat> um, if there are no more questions, it's then my great pleasure to introduce um, Stefan Hill from Red and Yellow. Um, this is an online open day, and I'm very excited for him to have the opportunity to talk you through um, what Red and Yellow is all about, what we offer, and what you can expect from Africa's leading creative school of business. Steph, take it away. Thanks so much, Nick. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's Good to see all of you uh, join this afternoon. Um, as mentioned, my name is Stefan. I'm the team lead for the online sales department. And yeah, what I'll be taking you through, as mentioned, is just a bit about who we are, um, you know, why it's perfect to choose red and yellow, and we'll cover a bit of our short courses and online qualifications. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's go ahead. Um, so yeah, red and yellow, we are one of the biggest feeders in the industry of talented cha change makers, innovators, and creators. Uh, we have been building this uh, brilliant careers for over 28 years. So we are so excited to be a uh, part of the Honors Network as well. Uh, we have now officially launched our digital marketing course uh, in Mauritius, Nigeria, as well as Tunisia. Uh, so we're not only in South Africa, we are across uh, the African continent as well. Um, where we come from? So Red and Yellow has been born out of the need for talented work-ready graduates. It all started with three industry legends who wanted to disrupt the marketing and advertising landscape to develop future creative leaders. They recognized then that the need to succeed in business and work, you need commercial logic as well as creative magic. Uh, you should notice a few of them, you guys, it's in the industry. <laughs> um, we also believe that it's important, a skill of the future, uh, will be creative thinking and that it's not limited to creative careers only. Tomorrow's challenges require creative thinking today to solve. Part of our mission and our mission as well as Red and Yellow is to teach the leaders of tomorrow to provide the innovators, creators and change makers with the most relevant and up-to-date skills uh, to make a minimal, meaningful impact as well as to create magic because that's what we're all about. Red and Yellow, we are the authority on digital marketing. In fact, we wrote the book on digital marketing. As you can see in the image, that's our e-text, uh, e-marketing essential guide to uh, marketing in the digital world. Um, this book is revised regularly and has more than 1 million downloads and is used and prescribed across universities all over the world. 
our latest edition has just launched uh, this month and it features more up-to-date uh, industry case studies, statistics, as well as the latest channel and tech updates and cutting edge uh, information on the metaverse as well. Quite exciting. Just a few of our industry uh, network. You can see that's quite a few of our um, uh, the, the corporates that we deal with on a regular basis. Uh, being a part of Bread and Yellow, this means you will benefit from regular guest lectures by industry leaders, creative entrepreneurs, influential figures, which expose you to fresh approaches uh, at current and re relevant business challenges, as well as the latest thinking. So what we'll be covering now is just a few of our online short courses, as well as our online qualifications. The exciting part starts. <laughs> Um, we will start out with our uh, design courses, our short courses. Uh, we have quite a few listed there. Uh, to name a few, we have our graphic design online uh, short course, uh, the beginner as well as the intermediate course. Uh, these courses span over a period of four, 14 weeks. And our aim is to design, uh, is to equip you uh, with the work ready skills to do graphic design uh, within the 14 week period. We do start out with the beginner course, which focuses on uh, uh, Adobe Illustrator, and then we have an intermediate course as well, which focuses on Photoshop. Uh, over and above the graphic design course, we do offer user experience design as well as uh, data visualization for, for designers as well. Uh, these courses are aimed to, as I mentioned earlier, to equip you with the skill to, in order for you to implement what you're learning uh, to ensure that you are work ready when you think the, the, the industry or the market. A few of our marketing courses, uh, of course, digital marketing. As I mentioned earlier, we are known for, for being a digital marketing school. We offer uh, digital marketing courses from introduction all the way to professional. Uh, these range anywhere from six weeks all the way to up, up to 15 weeks. These are all short courses. Um, but we also offer um, social media marketing, media planning, brand management, data analysis for marketers, as well as performance marketing. These are just a few of our digital marketing our marketing courses we do offer. Uh, all of them are presented entirely online as well. Uh, the next list of our courses are creative leadership. Uh, here we focus on account leadership, entrepreneurship. Different courses. Now, leadership is as equipped as possible. Cool. So, our next slide will move us over to our online qualifications. Um, we offer a few qualifications at an NQF5 level, which is our national certificates. Uh, the first one we have is the national certificate in digital marketing. This focuses on market on digital marketing specifically. Uh, we cover everything from strategy to optimization. Uh, user experience design, uh, uh, content creation, copywriting, just to name a few. Um, we have a national certificate in business analysis. Uh, this is a national certificate, but it is at an NQF7 level. This is over a period of 15 months. And then lastly, we have a national certificate in creating digital content. This focuses on content creation and uh, copywriting, uh, also over a period of 12 months at an NQF5 level. I will be moving over to our advanced diplomas. Uh, so advanced diplomas run over a two-year period. It is presented in completely online, right? Uh, just to mention, all of our online qualifications um, has tutorial sessions throughout um, the program. This happens once a week, and this will be with your lecturer. Our advanced diplomas, uh, we have four that we're currently offering. We have our marketing and advertising communication that runs over a period of two years. User centered design, which focuses on user experience and user interface, uh, designing processes with the user in mind. And then we have our advanced diploma in copywriting that's offered on a part time basis. Uh, the last one would be our digital marketing, advanced diploma in digital marketing. We are the first institution in Africa to offer a fully accredited, fully online NQF7 level advanced diploma in digital marketing. So, whatever you see out there, everybody has followed suit. We were the game changers. Uh, it is one of our most popular advanced diplomas um, um, at the moment. It's been running for quite some time. Um, and yeah, we look forward to seeing quite a bit of you guys joining either this year or next year. 
Great. So uh, going on to exciting news, we have a few new courses and programs coming up in the near future. Watch this space. Um, a few of our new courses and programs, we have our AI for copywriting, as well as our AI for design. These are what we call micro courses. It runs over a period of two weeks. Um, this will be um, running in the near future. It should be on our website um, shortly. So please have a look, continue checking our webpage. Uh, and then we also have our management development program for agency leadership. That's actually a six month program uh, that will be coming through shortly as well. And very, very excited about our BCom marketing, uh, which will uh, be entirely distance. Uh, it's at an NQF7 level and it runs over a period of four to six years. So please watch the space. This will be coming very, very soon. If you are keen on getting in touch with us, uh, our email address are reg is registrations at readingyellow.co.za. We have a WhatsApp number, which is 010-288-0682. You're more than welcome to use your the QR code to scan in and get in touch with us. We'll be more than happy to, to connect with you guys further. Yeah. That's all from me. I uh, will be handing you back over to Nick. Thank you. Thanks so much, Steph. Um, if you have any questions for Steph, feel free to pop those in the chat now. Um, we have reached the end of our formal webinar. Um, but again, if there are any questions you'd like answered, pop them in the chat and um, we will spend the next few minutes um, answering them. Um, and then while we wait for those questions, just a reminder that we are going to be running another poll shortly. Um, so if you'd uh, do us a favor and just answer as best you can, it'll take 30 seconds. We really appreciate your feedback. In the meantime, I want to say a huge thank you to Sarah um, for joining us today, taking time out of her very busy schedule, um, training everyone in content marketing. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. And um, yeah, big thanks to Steph as well for running through what Red and Yellow is all about. And I'm sure everyone here is much appreciative of um, taking something out today. Lastly, a really big thank you to everyone who has joined us for this webinar. Um, as a gift for attending today's session, I'm pleased to announce that you will benefit from 20% off any online short courses when you enroll and pay this July and August. All you need to do is use the code UCAN20. We'll pop that in the chat. And once again, send that through to you via email um, along with this presentation, this recording, and some other um, creative assets for you to use as well. Um, don't forget to check out redandyellow.co.za for upcoming short courses. Uh, digital content and copywriting is launching on the 24th of July, so keep an eye out for that, as well as digital marketing, digital marketing introduction, designing for the metaverse, and more. Ooh, if you are looking to study any online qualifications with us, you'll also save 7,500 grand on your registration fee this July and August. Uh, there'll be more details about that in the email we'll send to you as well. So just keep an eye on your inbox. So um, thank you once again, everyone for attending, taking time out of your busy schedule, whether it's your lunch break or not. Uh, we appreciate you um, having our time. I'm just gonna check if there's any uh, questions in the chat, nothing so far. Great, so once again, a really big thank you for, for joining Red and Yellow. Um, we appreciate your time. And if you can just fill in this remaining poll, and then if you're happy to drop off and continue with your day. Thanks so much and have a good one. Bye-bye.